Hello, AC students. Marsh here. So today we're going to graph rational functions. Um, what you're going to want to have on you today, your notes, a, some graphs that I gave you in class, and then a pen or a pencil as well. First things first, we need some vocabulary and just to remember some things. So first vocabulary word, asymptotes. We've heard these before. An asymptote is a line that the graph can get very close to, but you cannot cross an asymptote. So basically it can hug, but no touchy. Um, a hole is a discon discontinuity in the graph. Basically what it is is an x value that the function cannot include. So what that's going to look like in our graphs, if there is such a thing, there will be a big open dot in the middle of the graph. The degree we covered earlier too, the degree is at the highest exponent present in an expression. So if I would have the following expression x squared plus 3x plus 5, my degree would be 2 because it's the highest exponent present. And then coefficient is the number in front of a variable. So in this case, the leading coefficient would be 1 because that's the one that's in front of the x squared. Okay, Just some words to keep in your mind as we go through this today. So let's think about some inputs here. What can't I plug in for x? so that this would be work. Well, think about, I can't divide by zero, right? I can't have a zero on the bottom. So would you guys agree with me that x cannot e be equal to zero? So on this graph here then, where are the x's that are equal to zero? Well, that would be right here, right? Let me change color here so we can see which ones I'm pointing at. So like right here, there should be another zero right there, another one like right here. So would you agree that it's the same line of x equals zero, right? x equals zero is the line that I'm crossing that has all the x's that are equal to zero. What that's going to be known as is your vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes can only be identified or be identified by setting the denominator equal to zero and solving. All you need for this slide is the little box that I just brought up here about vertical asymptotes. Okay? Now, there are such a things as horizontal asymptotes, or we're going to abbreviate them as HA. Now, there's three rules that you can find that will happen. One one would be if the numerator's degree is less than the denominator's degree. So basically the highest exponent present is less than the highest exponent present. Okay, Y equals zero would be a horizontal asymptote, meaning it's going to go left and right at Y equals zero. If the numerator's degree is greater than the denominator's degree, there is no horizontal asymptotes at all. And if the numerator's degree equals the denominator's degree, what you're going to do is find the ratio, aka the fraction of the two leading coefficients. You're probably saying, Marsh, this is wonderful, but how do I do it? Let's take a look at a couple of examples, and hopefully it will kind of make more sense. So here's the steps we're going to take today. We are going to first factor the numerator and denominator. If anything cancels, this will be a hole in the graph. So this is when we're going to have that big hole, because that's a discontinuity. My x cannot equal that, because that would have been on the denominator, right? And then we're going to identify our horizontal or and our vertical asymptotes, because you can have both, or you could just have one or the other. And then we're going to input some values around the asymptotes to get a full picture of our graph. Okay, So that's the steps we're going to want to do. So here's our first example, 2x plus 5 divided by x minus 1. First things first, can I factor anything? No, no factoring available. So I can now identify my vertical asymptote. Remember, our vertical asymptote is basically taking the denominator and setting it equal to zero. So x minus one equals zero, so x equals one would be my vertical asymptotes equation of the line. So let's go ahead and mark that in on my graph with a red dotted line. So x equals one would be the line right here, right? There we go. Okay, let me go back to my blue. Now we need to figure out our horizontal asymptote. So let's double check our 
information here. Uh, let me flip back. So, the horizontal, let's check out the degrees. So the degree of this numerator would be 1, because that's the highest exponent, right? Degree is also 1 on here. So I got degree of 1 over degree of 1. So if we look at our little rules of ha, we have the numerator's degree is equal to denominator's degree. So what I'm going to do is find the ratio of the leading coefficients. So it's going to be y equals, and then the two numbers sitting in the front. So 2 over 1, which is just 2, right? y equals 2. So let's go ahead and graph in that horizontal asymptote. There we go. Now, we need to now make a fuller, more easier thing of the graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick numbers that are to the left of our, of our vertical asymptote and to the right of our vertical asymptote. So I picked the numbers negative 2, negative 1, and 0. That's on the left of the vertical asymptote. Notice, guys, I'm going all the way until I hit to 1. So plugging negative 2 into our function for x, I got negative 1 third back out. Plugging in negative 1, got negative 3 halves. And then plugging in 0, I got negative 5. Make sure you get the same values as me, OK? Negative 2, negative 1 third goes about right here. Negative 1, negative 3 halves, that's about right here. And 0, negative 5, that's about right here. Now remember, guys, the asymptotes, no touchy, no touch, OK? So we can get strangely close to them, but remember, they're never going to cross. Never, ever, never, ever. So that would be my graph on that side. Now, there is going to be kind of like two pieces to this graph, if you want to consider it. So let's check the other side, because we haven't checked the other side of our domain, have we? So my 2, 3, and 4, those would be the side on this side, right? So I plugged in 2, and I got 9. Plugged in 3, and I got 11 halves, which is like 5.5, right? And then I plugged in 4, and I got 4 and 1 third, approximately. So let's go and graph that. 2, 9 right there, 3 and 5.5, about right there, and 4 and 4 one third, so about right there. So if I graph here, something like that. Notice, guys, how it almost kind of is flipped, if you want to consider it that. They kind of mirror each other. Your graphs normally will look like that. Now, what about domain and what about our range? Well, my domain, notice, guys, I'm covering all of my values except negative or except one, excuse me. So I have a domain of negative infinity to one and from one to infinity. Notice, guys, I am not including one because we are unable to cross over it. What about our range? So it looks like the only range value I cannot cover is 2. So I'm going to go from negative infinity to 2 and 2 to infinity. Remember that you guys means with union of. So that means that these two pieces together make my domain, OK? Just something to keep in mind. Now, looks like I got some factoring to do on the top, don't I? x squared minus x minus 2. Well, that's x minus 2 over x plus 1, right? Factor that out, because my ac would be negative 2, so I'd get 2 and ne negative 2 and a positive 1, right? Cool, look, something's going to cross off. But remember, when something crosses off or cancels out, that's going to leave a hole. So I'm going to have a hole at x minus 2, the factor of that. So x equals 2 would have a hole there in my graph. 
Now guys, this is super simple. All I need to do now is graph this graph, x plus 1. Which you guys, you guys have graphed x plus 1 for years. That's a line, right? It's a linear equation. Start at 1, go up 1, over 1 a bunch of times, right? And we're going to put it in our line right there and right there. But now, remember guys, I need to have a hole because I gotta keep true to my original equation here. And the original equation, 2 did not work. So I need to have at x equals 2, which would be right here, right here on my line, I need to have a big hole right there. And I'm going to erase the line inside of that hole. Redraw my line back out. Because, guys, I need to show via my graph that 2 does not work in the original. Even though we cancel it out, I still, because remember, your line is the solutions of all of your function. Since 2 cannot be a solution, even though we cancel it out, it can't be present in your graph. If you want, if you graph this on a graphing calculator, it actually shows a hole there. It's kind of actually neat, but it'll graph the same graph as what we did here. And the last graph of the night, 2x squared plus 5 over x squared minus 25. Well, the bottom here, we can make that x plus 5, x minus 5, right? But it doesn't look like anything's going to cancel out. Womp womp. So, let's find our vertical asymptote then. So, vertical asymptote. Well, I'm going to have two of them, aren't I? Because x can equal 5 or x can equal negative 5, right? Because i got to check for both. So, we're actually going to have two vertical asymptotes here. One here and one here. There we go. Now, what about our horizontal asymptotes? So my degree of my numerator is 2. Degree of denominator is also 2, so let's remember back. What do we do if they're equal? A ratio, isn't it? Numerator over denominator. So my ha, or horizontal asymptote, would be 2 over 1. So y equals 2. So let's put in that horizontal or vertical asymptote. There we go. All right. Now, let's fill in a graph. Now, we have three regions to check, right? We got one region here, we got to plug some stuff in, a region here to plug some stuff in, and a region to plug some stuff in here. So the first region, I'm going to plug in negative 8, negative 7, and negative 6. So if I plug in negative 8, I get approximately 3.4, roughly. Plugging in 7, I get 4.29. And negative 6, if I substitute that in for x, I get a 7, it looks like. Now, let's go ahead and do it this way for this middle term. Actually, let's graph this. Negative 8, 3.4. So about right there. Negative 7, 4.29, that's going to be right there. And then negative 6, 7 is about right there. So I'm going to have a graph that's going to look something that in that general vicinity. Okay, um, in my next part here, let's go ahead and plug in negative 4, 0, and 4. So then maybe I'll get a nice kind of accurate picture of that middle part there. So it looks like for the first part, I'm going to get negative 4.11. Plug in 0, I'm going to get negative 5. And then if I plug in 4, also going to get a negative 4.11. So it looks like I'm going to get kind of like a parabola kind of thing here going on the bottom. So 0, negative 5. No, hold on. That doesn't make sense. That should be a negative 1 fifth. Sorry, guys. So a negative 1 fifth, that would be about right there. 
Um, negative 4 is negative 4.11, and 4 is negative 4.11. So it's going to be a graph that's going to look something like this. Notice, guys, it's not crossing our horizontal asymptote exactly because there is it is a little bit higher, but that's okay. And then uh, we got one more section to check. So I'm going to extend my table up here. So I'm also going to check 6, 7, and 8. So on 6, I get 7. Plugging in 7, I get 4.29. And on 8, I get 3.4. Kind of neat how this is kind of matching each other, isn't it? So 6, 7, 7, 4.29, and 8, 3.4. So something about right. There we go. That is my graph of this particular function. And that's the end of this video. See you later, Sabres.